online art session. This is Nadia Ma. This month I'm super excited to explore the world of comics. Aren't you excited? Have you read any comics or have you seen any? Well, I'm sure that you must have seen in the newspapers and magazines. So, what are comics? Comics are visual stories. Stories which are drawn out and colored into where all the characters talk to each other. You might have seen the characters, the speech bubbles and the speech balloons and the dialogues that our little characters speak. So this month we will be looking into our own comics and how to create them. Aren't you excited? I'm super excited because at the end of the month I'm gonna create my own comic story. Wow, that's cool, right? So who is there with me? Who is gonna create a comic story with me? Let me see. So now let me explain you session one, worksheet one and two. So in our worksheet one, we don't have something related to comics, but we do have the techniques which will help you in doing all the worksheets for the entire month. In our worksheet one, we have six watercolor techniques to practice on. Those six watercolor techniques are color blocking, dry on dry, wet on wet, color wash, stippling and gradient. So practice all these six techniques, follow the instructional video. If you find any difficulty in understanding the video, please pause and then continue, finish it and then again play the video. So let me take you through worksheet two. So what is worksheet two? So in our worksheet two, we're gonna create panels. So what is this panel? So basically a panel creates the comic page. So there is an individual panel when all put together, it becomes a story. So inside this panel, we create a situation, a character and the dialogue for the character. So in the instructional video, we have taught you how you have to create the panels. What are the things which you have to keep in your mind and, and what you have to practice for. Okay. So please follow the instructional video and if you get any doubts, you can always reach us through Google Classroom and Artbeat Mamba. So now quickly, let's jump into our worksheets. Let's not waste the time. Before we begin our worksheet, let's run through all the materials check. We need a watercolor K and size 2 number round brush. And also we need a cup of clean water. And then we need a tissue paper or a waste cloth. Any one of this will do. And we need a palette for the color mixing. When we have all our materials, let's quickly jump into a worksheet. Please do not forget to write down your name and your teacher's name and the date as well. So when we see your assignment, we know it is yours and not anybody else's. And please note, if you have any doubts or if you feel the speed of the video is too fast, feel free to pause the video and replay whichever section you are finding it difficult. So first I have dipped the brush in the cup of water, which is clean. So also you have to observe, I just dipped the tip of the brush. I didn't dip the entire brush inside the cup of water. I just dipped the tip of the brush. And now I'm coloring from left hand side to right hand side. So when I feel the water is not enough or sufficient, then I'm going to dip the tip of the brush again. And then I'm going to take my color. So here I'm using chrome yellow. The first technique which we are doing here is color blocking. So you already know how to do color blocking. So this is kind of a practice for you all. And this color blocking technique, you can use it in various artworks. So whenever you want the particular thing to be colored completely without any white spaces or patches, use a color blocking method. Also observe how I'm holding the brush. So, you can observe I'm holding the brush above the metal part. So, please make sure you hold the brush 
above the metal part and then start coloring. Again, I'm dipping only the tip of the brush inside the cup of water. Do not take too much of paint or water. Anything which is too much is really bad. So in case by mistake, if you take too much of water, then what do you do? So we will use our magic technique, which is we will take a dry brush and place it on top of the excess water so that the dry brush will absorb all the water. Isn't it? So remember all the things which I have told you now. Do not forget and use the same method to do the color blocking technique. So now my first box is done. See how nicely it is done and how beautiful it is looking. So now let's repeat the same thing in our second box. Before that, please make sure you have washed your brush in a clean water and then repeat the same technique in the second box and do it yourself in the third box for your practice. Now, let's quickly move on to the second technique which is dry on dry. So what is dry on dry? Dry on dry is nothing but we will paint it on the plain water. It is exactly the same as color blocking technique. So we are taking the paint, use less water here and then apply it again from the left hand side to right hand side. Of course you can even use it from the top to bottom, that is not a problem, but do not change the direction. So I have zoomed in the video for you so that you can see it nice and clear. Make sure there are no white gaps and there are no patches. Again, so let me ask you one thing. So where do we use this dry on dry technique? We will use this dry on dry technique, especially when we have to do a grass in a landscape or a seascape. So it is very much useful for us because what happens when we are using too much of water or wet on wet technique to make a grass, it spreads out, the color blooms out. So always make sure whenever we have to do some leaves or bushes or grasses, so we have to use dry on dry technique. So as you can see, I'm going from left hand side to the right hand side. So I'm going very slow so that you people can do it with me. So please make sure you're completing it with me, okay? So let's see who is going to do the first. Is it me or you? I know my children are very fast. So let's have a challenge. Let's see who is going to finish it faster. Going faster. I hope you people are not gonna cope over with me, isn't it? Or you have finished it. I'm almost done with the first dry and dry technique in the first box. Also we will use the same method and we will repeat the same in our second box and before that as I told you we will wash the brush in a clean water and wipe it in a tissue paper and then go for the second box with a new color. So now I'm completed with my first box. And let's repeat the same in the second box. And remember, there should be no white gaps. And if there are white gaps, please try to fill that up. So have a closer look how I have completed the dry on dry technique and now we will do the same method in our second box and I will leave the third box for you to do. So now let's quickly move to the third technique which is wet on wet. So what is a wet on wet? So wet on 
wet technique usually in our class we always used to do the wet on wet technique using water so what do we used to do you we used to apply the water first and then on top of the water we used to apply the paint and the paint used to bloom and give us a beautiful effect but that is not it we can also use water as a base or a paint as well so basically we used to apply water and then paint and also we can apply paint and then on top of that we can apply paint so did you get that so just observe your what i'm doing so i'm using the chrome yellow color and i have taken it in my palette and applying water and painting it from my left hand side to the right hand side completely without leaving any white spaces so this is also one of the wet on wet technique which we never know this is something new isn't it and now i'm applying the darker shade of the paint so instead of water we are using paint here so on top of this again we will use another color and we will apply it that is also wet on wet technique did you know this so today i'm 100% sure that you're learning something new as you can see I just wiped my brush, cleaned it with a clean water. And now I have taken purple. And I will use this color on top of yellow. So please always take the paint in your palette so that you can take the right amount of paint and water. So you will not end up with taking more paint or more water. So it is always good to use a palette. So now as I told you, I'm applying purple color on top of yellow. So this is also one of the wet on wet technique. So be careful, do not leave any white spaces as we are using wet on wet technique. It is common that most of the students end up with using more water. Please make sure that you remove excess water with a dry brush and then go forward with the technique. And you can use this wet on wet technique for the sky, for the uh, ground or for anything which needs to be uh, blended in. I'm taking more paint and applying it now and make sure do not rub the brush on top of the sheet the sheets of particles will come out and it will tear your sheet make sure you use the brush very softer so now we will do the same thing in our second box so I'm taking pink color first in my palette. Use the same method and do the same techniques in the second box. Again, in the second box, we are using paint instead of water because we have already done lots and lots of times in the class using water, isn't it? So always make sure your brush is neat and clean. Please wash your brush. Now as the water was dirty, I changed the cup of water. Always make sure whenever we are using watercolors, it is always necessary that we use plain and clean water. And now I'm taking the second color to my palette, which is sap green or light green. Make sure you take enough paint and water and mix it and keep it ready. So now my paint is ready. So first I'm using green color as a base. 
make sure to mix right amount of water and paint as this is a new technique I'm also doing the second box with you I'm not gonna leave you alone so now let's finish coloring the green in the second box and then on top of that I'll be applying pink it is almost done make sure don't leave any white spaces and again if you use too much of water please take out the water using the dry brush so now i have completed coloring the green inside the second box filling up all the white spaces and i'm making sure there are no patches now let me wash the brush and wipe it with my tissue paper and now i'm taking the pink color and applying it on top of green so this kind of wet on wet technique you can definitely use for a sunset because sunset will have lots of colors like yellow orange red pink purple sometimes so you can use these wet on wet techniques and create different shades of sunset so be careful and to do not change the direction so my paint was not enough in my palette so I'm taking the paint again and mixing it with my palette I'm applying it in my second box from the top again and then using one direction which is from left hand side to the right hand side so we will complete this make sure you follow the same method and do it in your third box let's see how good you're gonna do it and now we're coming to the fourth technique which is stippling so we all know the stippling method we have done it lots and lots of time so i hope all my students will be doing it with me and finish it faster and also before that please observe how i'm holding the brush so i'm holding the brush straight i'm holding the brush straight so I'm not holding the brush slant okay so hold the brush straight and make the dots and make sure you make the small dots not the big dots always remember to touch only the tip of the brush touch only the tip of the brush do not apply too much of pressure when you're doing stippling method Make sure the dots are close enough but do not touch each other. I'm almost completed. See how fast I am. I hope everyone are doing it with me and everyone are almost completing. So now we will repeat the same in our second box and I will leave the third box for you to practice. Now let me wash the brush and then move on to the fifth technique which is a color wash. So what is a color wash? Isn't that the name new? Yes, the name is quite new but the technique is the same. So color wash is nothing but we will apply the water first on the paper. And then we will apply the color so that the color blooms and gives us a good effect. So the color wash is same as a wet wash. So make sure you apply enough water and the right amount of water in the particular area. And now as you can see I am taking the paint and applying it on top of water 
you can see the colors are blooming. Can you see how nicely it spreads out? Make sure to complete the entire particular area. Do not leave any white spaces. If you feel the water is too much, please remove the water using the brush. And it is not mandatory that you have to use only the brush, dry brush. You can also use tissue paper or you can use a cotton in order to remove the excess water. That's up to you. I have zoomed in so that you can have a clear vision. I did the same thing for the second box and I'm leaving the third box again for you people to practice. Now let's move on to the last technique which is gradient. So we all know what is a gradient technique, isn't it? So gradient is nothing but coloring from dark to light or light to dark. So how do we get the gradient shade using watercolors? Because we never get. So most of the time I have heard students saying that uh, it gets messed up or it comes like the same. I don't get that properly. So please observe here children. So I am applying the top part of the box darker and then after half of the box i'll take the plain water and i will make it lighter can you see as i go gradually the color is becoming light and light isn't it i hope you people are noticing the difference observe it again and then do it So now I'm only taking the plain water. I'm not taking the colors. I'm taking the water and I'm spreading the colors. That's it. Isn't it simple? I want you all to follow the same method and do the gradient sheet. So now I'm taking only the plain water and spreading the lightest shade. Hope you all got the technique. And now again we will repeat the same in our second box. And of course the third box is for you people to practice. So I'm almost done with my first box of gradient technique. As you can see here, we have almost completed today's worksheet. And stop for a second and look at the artwork we have just created. This is what your final outcome will look like. I enjoyed working this worksheet with you people did you so do share this artwork with us submit your work to the google classroom regularly and on time to get periodic feedback this way you can improve your skills and make the most of your classes you will also receive badges every week depending on prompt submissions creativity drawing coloring imagination etc also do take the picture of the artwork while you are holding it keep creating and remember art is a good start